Hello again. Um, another book review for uh, The Blind Owl by Sedeg Hediot. Or Sedeg, I think. Sedeg. Um, again, I'm probably not. I'm probably butchering that name, but um, yeah, it's a very beautiful copy here. Um, but um, I actually listened to this on audiobook. So. Uh, but I, I felt so compelled to get the actual copy, the physical copy, because I'd like to reread it sometime. Um, yeah, this is a... Um, Sadiq Hediot was a 19th century... No, 20th century. Um, born in the early, I want to say, like, maybe 1910s or something. But he didn't live a very long life. Uh, he lived to the age of, like, 47, I believe. Um, because he actually um, took his own life, tragically. Um, because he was, uh, deeply, um, like, sorely depressed. And you get the sense that, and then you might say the cliche, like, well, most great artists are. Most the, the cliche of the tortured male, not like tortured male, but tortured artist of any kind, of any caliber, of any gender. So, um, but you kind of get that sense in The Blind Owl, especially. And I must be honest that this is the only book by him that I've read so far. So far. Um, but I intend to read more. Um, the Blind Owl is very, um, inimitably, inimical, in, in, inimitably poetic, but not, it's not sustaining any rhyme scheme per se, it's not like, it's not like Gertrude's Faust where it's like, you know, it's written in this or that, or it's not even, um, it's written in like meter or, uh, or, uh, like a rhyme scheme like in, in, or Pushkin's Eugene Onegin, either, um, it's simply just written and just, in, but like this candid, uh, like a very confessional, I like to say. It's uh, from the point of view of this, of what is described as a paint keeper, or he's a, he, he paints uh, cases. Um, and I think for like match, not matchbox, but it's something else. It's a pin, I think it was like pin case painter, like a case painter, I think. Like he painted cases. And he's just very... Uh, tortured man like you and it's told yeah i don't know if i said this already but he's told from his point of view so you get like a very like huge breadth of different phases and and he gets very hallucinogenic very magically realistic um and fiction starts blending with reality and he starts talking about a former love that takes the form uh uh you know, like, sometimes it takes the form of, like, a woman, and but there's a shape, this is why it's called the blind owls, that, for the most part, the shape that you see, um, like, in his dreams, like, he, like, he, he's, um, you should mention that he's, uh, very paranoid about what he sees, like, on the outside, because, uh, literally on the outside of his home, because he, there's people in the street, and he's very, like, wary of them, and he, like, to, and, like, he'll, like, every moment, every few, you know, especially in the beginning of the novel, like, he keeps, you know, like, er, you know, frequently going back and forth, like, ooh, is there anybody watching me in my house? You know, because he's living on kind of like, been in a public space, but he's definitely sequestered in his own little, in his own little privacy, private home. But again, there's this big thing, there's this big repeating motif with, um, like, th us and them, like, the, the subject and object, kind of like a, Sartrean, you know, uh, as in John Paul Sartre's, you know, like hell's other people, like, you know, the, uh, this idea that, um, my, you know, my subjective, my own objective, or rather sense of myself and the fact that the other, the look is giving you a look, the fact that somebody else is perceiving me, the beholder, you know, they're beholding me, like the fact that you can't, you can't do anything about your own identity in that sense like right like it's being skewered and it's always going to be seen through their eyes not through your own eyes so that is why hell is other people in his heart's eyes um <laughs> which i'm gonna have to review sometime um but yeah and also the wall too is really great which i did recently i'm also gonna just throw that in there um <laughs> but yeah blind out back to this um without getting too distracted uh like i said um he was a 
I'm just going to give it like a slight bio in the middle of it, but he was Persian. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he was Persian. He was a master of the language. It's saying here in his mini bio that he translated Chekhov and Kafka, so, and I get, and I get a sense of both of those writers, and with, uh, Hedayat, too. He, um, but yeah, I think he was a man who also struggled with faith, too. Um, you see, like, bits of, like, Sufi mysticism in there, but, like, also a mixture of, like, of some yearning for, um, for, like, a creed or some, something bigger than you, right? And that's, like, in the, in the blind out, you see this, like, very tortured uh, purview into this man's life. Like, a very, uh, you're just, like, every avenue of just, <laughs> of, like, disassociation and just, like, you know, like, um, it's been compared to schizoid um, or schizophrenic tendencies as well, with this narrator might be suffering in one. And that he's deeply distressed over, you know, like, his love and his firm, like, his love is being painted as both a horror that he keeps saying like he keeps saying in the novel like that horror like that you know he keeps like you know rubbing that in that that's like you know like she's both he's married to her and like he's he's taking a vow to her but at the same time it's very it's described very dispat you know not dispassionate but it's described l it's uh it's it's kind of you know ineffable hard to explain like uh, what he's going at exactly there but it's definitely very, um, like, um, suspended logic. Like, there's not, like, a lot of, like, he, met, he, he uses metaphors a lot. And, um, like, he'll, like, his wife in this is, is very much, um, both, like, a kind of an auger of, of something, you know, of, uh, ugly and disgusting and pitiful. Like, why did I marry this woman? And at the same time, he's, like, also, like, it describes her as this, like, angelic being, and the fact that this angelic being is also, there's almost something terrible in, within that, the angelic, like, there's something, um, you know, because he goes beyond just the measly contract of marriage, you know, that's why I say metaphor, um, like, the social type, you know, contract, but he goes, like, you know, there's something, it's a, almost like a Gnostic type thing, where it's something very, um, there's almost something terrifying about, like, the biblical angels, too, you know, like, something like, they were seraphs, and they, you know, Ezekiel was taken to the seventh heaven, and it's, these are, like, very horrifying things, too, like, they're not just, oh, angels are just these, like, super, like, laxed, <laughs> or, you know, you know, winged creatures that kind of fly down, and they're very soft and angelic, pallid faces, and they cherubic, and they're, you know, they're, they're only necessarily like soft and and nurturing but i think like in the sense like here you get the you know this look into like the divine is something that's also kind of horrifying too like just like yeah so <laughs> um but yeah i'm drawing a blank on the rest of it too um near the end there's like a very like the end is a, it's not like a twist ending but it's definitely like a whoa um, I don't want to give too much away, but it's, you know, Hedayat's writing is just very, very beautiful. And it's told in a very, like I said, it's suspended. Um, it's very metaphysical. It's very supernatural. Um, you know, like this blind owl, like he sees the image of this thing and he's tortured by, you know, constantly the need to like look and not look away. It's like, <laughs> um, because it's like, it's both horrifying, in it, but it's also like, regaling at the same like ooh, like you can't decide like what it is like that's so that's so great about it um but he's a definitely it's he's in awe i think is what this novel goes is, is what the overarching theme of this is so yeah um that's it that's all i have for today thanks for watching